And there's a whole fucking police report. There's a whole detective that said you propositioned him and you got in the car, you made the deal, and then he put the cuffs on you. That's in a record. If somebody goes and checks my record, now they're going to find things on my record. Uh, I was charged with child abduction. It's a, a six, five, six felony. It's real low, but it's still considered a felony. So. It's kind of weird. Now, here's the one thing I wanted to say about that because I recently was watching something else and another rapper was talking about how he got into a confrontation with another rapper, right? Mm -hmm. Who's kind of on a higher level than he is. So he was sitting there talking. Now, this this guy that's talking right now on the interview, he's, you know, one of the local street dudes from, you know, his particular neighborhood and, you know, they've been doing this for a while. So they in the rap industry and now they got to a point where they have enough money they can chill, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So they got into this confrontation a little bit and the man, the uh, other higher up rapper tells him, he said, okay, he said, that's cool. He said, the gangsters is coming for you. Just wait and watch. He said, okay, man. I'm, he said, whatever. You know, he said, whoever you, you know, because they, you know, they, they, they would all that, you know, stuff. Mm -hmm. Two days later, the police come and pick him up. Well, they Federal. gangsters too, man. <laughs> Take him, give him a fair case, give him two gun charges. He gets, I think he gets arrested and incarcerated for that gets out and I think I don't get this I don't want to get it wrong but I think he I think he says a little while after that I'll just say that for the time period because I'm not really sure what he said he says that they came and got him again short period of time like for what though he said they threw something else on him oh so they setting him up yeah basically for him to stay Keep going to jail or stay in jail, right? Mm -hmm. So he's like, all right, at this point, I, I'm not going to deal with nobody else. Because you're telling me every time I get out, go outside, see somebody, I got to come back and deal with this. No, I'm good. So he ends up just kind of chilling to himself and just secluding himself a little bit. Here's the thing that I'm saying, though. Like she said, she got a case for child abduction that, you know, is a ghost case. Some planted or floating around on the record that, for your knowledge, you have no recollection of because you didn't do that. Mm -hmm. But it's something pinned on you to be able to have you sit longer than needed because that's what they do us anyway so just pointing out that case for those who aren't really listening to the fact of like well why she get a, a th and she doesn't know about it because things like this get pinned okay when they want to make sure that you can sit longer and stay in there longer and don't have access to things outside and can't talk to the people that you've been talking to and give up this information that you have mm -hmm. They come get you. Oh, yeah. See, that's the sad thing, you know, because there's a game that's going to play. It could be short game or it could be long-term game. This society <clears throat> and, the, and the laws of this country is set up for long-term. Yeah. They they knew if anything ever came down or jumped off, they yeah. was going to be enough to cover it so they can come to you and just bust in your house, come take you out, take you somewhere. Nobody don't know where the hell you are, beat you. Ooh. You know, torture you, do whatever. You know, if they decide to release you, they can, or they can make you disappear for the rest of your life. You, you know, you don't even, people don't want to know what the hell happened to you. They'd be like, well, what happened to Jimmy Hoffa? We don't know. Most of these folks. But we know something happened to him because he, he stopped being around. Most of these people then got sent to a, a third, third, third. Man, they got world, them, they got country, those black ops island. Man, they got stuff right here though, man, in this country. Oh, yeah. You know. They didn't already talked about certain things being moved a few different times, so Yeah, so 
you know. You don't Once know people where figure out locations and stuff, and then people start really going to see if it's really there, and then they really start finding information, and they're mm-hmm. like, okay, well, now they got privy, so let's move this one so they really know next they're going to find the other one. So let's just get this location out of here. It's, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of places. You're hiding behind <laughs> stuff, man. And she You're exposes stuff. a yeah. lot of people. All the time. Well, you see now they Listen, they letting bro. a lot more information get loose because they're trying to get in front of the information that people are finding out about. Cause just like that one guy that was um, walking on the sky uh, <clears throat> in the uh, sky lab or whatever they call it that's in space as us uh, now. Well, he was one of the people that was stationed on it on this lab. Hmm. But they told them don't take pictures of things that they see. Because yeah. these people already know there's a lot of flying, un, unexplained flying object. Well, this dude had a go coat, a go pro, pro, that he had mounted in a real nice place that they didn't detect. So every time he would go out and look at stuff, he was just naturally recording shit, right? Man, he got beautiful pictures of these spaceships coming up to the. You can see. The space station, see him on the space station, and you see these you see these ships coming up from different places and just hovering, and and he's up in space moving fourteen hundred miles an hour because you know they going fourteen thousand miles, they moving in the circumference of the earth, and this thing just comes up like it's nothing and just hovers and go around and come in front, you know all that kind of stuff, man. They, they have some stuff going on, and they got some craziness out there, man. Yeah, and they don't I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready there. to get into it. Man, I want one. I want one. I'm gonna see if I can talk alien talk. Now, bleep, 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 bleep. See, you answered it. <laughs> bleep, 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 bleep. Literally, we were being hunted. It took about what, babe? About four months for us to shake, shake them off. Um. So not long after we did this interview, um, and then the Storm Monroe interviews, mm-hmm. which was all infiltration. Um, Tasha K. I'll say allegedly, <laughs> for y'all. No. Right. So ain't nobody talking about no defamations. Yeah, yeah, we gonna get to that. We don't want nobody talking about no defamations. Right. She in Africa. So <laughs> allegedly, um, the gold shoe bitch, um, she was she was hired to target me, and you know. When I started the women's group WCW meeting, um, we opened up the Zoom room every Wednesday for women to come. And we were building it little by little, piece by piece. 